Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to derive the expression for strain energy of your beam. To begin with, let us imagine a simply supported beam. Okay, that's a simply supported beam of uh, length L. And uh, the one more geometric property is moment of inertia, that is I. The unit for length can be meter and the unit for moment of inertia is meter raised to the power 4. Moment of inertia which is resistance to bending. Now this beam is made up of material that has got an Young's modulus value of magnitude E and its unit can be Newton per meter square or megapascal or gigapascal uh, whatever units that would be conducive for you. Okay, now what is the stuff that is acting on the beam? This beam is subjected to, let us say, uniformly distributed load. So that is represented by this red lines here, curved red lines. So that's uniformly distributed load of magnitude, let us say, it's Q Newtons per meter. So over a span of one meter, the total load that is acting on the beam is Q Newtons. Now what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to draw a highly exaggerated view, a highly amplified view of this beam. So let me do that. So this is a highly uh, exaggerated view. Maybe in a fresh page I can do that. So here we go. So that's uh, an amplified view of the deflection. Let me represent the neutral axis. So that is the neutral axis. So this is a magnified view of the deflection of the beam. Now what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to consider a small portion of this beam, a small portion of this beam. So let us say that maybe I can represent that by this blue here. So that's a small portion of the beam that I'm considering. I cannot represent the three dimensional in a three dimensional way, but I will try my best. So that's the small portion. And the small portion is considered at a distance of, let us say, y from the neutral axis. And let us say that the length of the small portion, okay, this length can be dx. And the cross-sectional area of the small portion, maybe I can represent the cross-sectional area by, I can shade, the, so this is the cross-sectional area of the small portion that is I'm shading it by yellow color so that is uh, DA so that's the small cross-sectional area now I'm going to write the expression for strain energy of this small piece so what is the expression for strain energy of the small piece so because this is a small piece let me say that it's del U right small piece the expression for strain energy is half into W into deflection. So this is a very general expression for strain energy. I'm going to take this expression. I'm going to apply this expression to this small blue piece. Okay. In the next step, I'm going to write, okay, of course, the small piece will be subjected to stress, right? Of course, uh, the beam, this particular small piece will be subjected to bending stress, okay? Um, you can see very, very clearly that uh, this particular small piece, all the layers above the neutral axis will be subjected to compression for this particular type of physical scenario and all the layers below the neutral axis will be subjected to tension. So obviously there is going to be a kind of compressive load that will act uh, in the layers above the neutral axis. If you want to consider a layer below the neutral axis, of course it will be subjected to uh, tension. Uh, depending on, this, on the way in which this beam is bending, um, we can say that above the neutral axis it is subjected to compression and below the neutral axis it is subjected to tension. All right, now I'm going to represent the load in terms of stress. So stress is load by area. So load is stress into cross-sectional area and that is DA. And I'm going to represent the deflection, which is the change in length. You know, strain 
is change in length divided by original length. Of course, the original length in our case is dx. So the change in length can be represented as e into dx. Okay, so I'm going to take this value and I'm going to put it here. For the expression for deflection is uh, strain into dx. That's right. In the next step, I'm going to rewrite this expression as 1 by 2 into sigma into. How can I write this e? Well, Eng's modulus is stress by strain. So you can see strain is stress by Eng's modulus into dA into dx. So this is 1 by 2, sigma into sigma is sigma square divided by E into dA into dx. In the next step, I'm going to invite the bending equation. And you know the bending equation, this is a 100 year old equation. It is m by i is equal to sigma by y is equal to e by r. I can work out for sigma. Sigma is going to be e by r into y. So I'm going to take this value of sigma and plug it in the expression for strain energy. I'm going to plug the value for sigma we just derived. So it's going to be 1 by 2e. Sigma square, this time it's going to be e by r into y, the whole square, so that is sigma square, into dA into dx, into dA into dx. So this can be further written as e by 2 because 1 x modulus in the denominator and 1 x modulus in the numerator cancel each other out. So that is going to be e by 2 into 1 by r square or maybe 1 by r the whole square into y square into dA into dx. You know, what, what is this radius? Well, uh, this radius is, you know, this radius of curvature. It's this radius, particular radius. And we know that 1 by r, you know, there is a separate video. Maybe I can, I can give it in the description. That is, 1 by r is equal to d square v over dx square, where v is deflection of the beam, but vertical deflection of the beam. Uh, in the video uh, on deriving the governing differential equation of a simply supported beam subjected to uniformly distributed load, I have derived this particular expression, so you may want to check it through. I can give it in the de description. So just plug this value of 1 by r is equal to d squared v by dx squared here. So what is that you are going to get? You are going to get e over 2. It's going to be d squared v over dx squared. The whole square into y square into dA into dx. So this is the expression for the strain energy stored in the small piece. Well, this is not the result, but if you want to find out the strain energy stored in the next small piece, and the next small piece, right? Maybe if you want to find out, maybe I can do that here. Maybe I can take a fresh page. So here is the beam. And this is our neutral axis. That's the neutral axis. And the portion that we considered is here. And you want you can consider the next portion beneath this portion add that strain energy and the next portion beneath this portion add that strain energy and the next portion beneath this so if you keep doing that you can find the total strain energy stored in the along across the cross section and the trick that you are going to do is you have to integrate with respect to the area right you have to integrate with respect to the area so that is how you find the total strain energy stored across the cross section. Am I correct? That's right. So that is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to integrate this expression with respect to the cross sectional area dA in order to find the total strain energy that is stored uh, across the cross section. So what I do, I integrate this expression, of course, with respect to 
the area, the total area I'm going to, it is across the cross-sectional area I'm going to integrate. It is e over two, uh, d square v over dx square into y square into da into dx. And if you look at this expression, we can pull x more or less than two common outside. You can also pull uh, one by r, which is d squared v by dx squared, the whole square. And that can also be pulled outside because that is not going to change with respect to the cross-sectional area because they are constants. You see this radius one by r, it's not going to change with respect to the cross-sectional area, right? So we can just pull them outside. We can just pull them outside, right? And what about this uh, dx? And that is also not going to change with respect to the cross-sectional area. That can also be pulled outside. So pull all the constants. So I will, I will just put a red circle, indicate that it's a constant with respect to the cross-sectional area. This is a constant with respect to the cross-sectional area. And this is a constant with respect to the cross-sectional area. What about y? Well, that is not a constant. You can see. Y is the distance from the neutral axis. And of course, when you consider the next layer beneath it, the value of Y changes. That cannot be pulled outside. Of course, DA cannot be pulled outside because you are integrating with respect to the cross-sectional area. So DA cannot be pulled outside. So let me pull all the uh, constants outside of the integration. So I get del U is equal to E by 2, that's a constant d square v over dx square is a constant whole square and dx that's a constant and the only thing that is left inside the integration is you are getting y square into da and you know that what is integral of y square into da that should be a separate video that i can make that is this is moment of inertia which is resistance to bending so the expression for the total expression for strain energy across the cross section, it is now EI over 2 integral, I'm sorry, it's not integration now, it's EI over 2, often integrating, it is EI over 2 d square v over dx square, the whole square into dx. So this is the total strain energy that is stored in this cross-sectional area. Now I want to find out the total strain energy that is stored throughout the length of the beam. So I have to consider the next cross-sectional area. That's right. And I have to consider, find the strain energy, add it with the next cross-sectional area. Add it with the next cross-sectional area, which means that I have to sum all the strain energies to get this total strain energy that is stored in the beam. So what I do is I'm going to integrate this expression with respect to the length. So this is dx, so over the limit 0 to L. Now I can pull the constants outside. So now you are going to integrate with respect to the length. So that is the total strain energy, u. So the total strain energy, u, is equal to u is equal to x mod is a constant moment of inertia is constant 2 can be pulled outside right uh, of course the radius it's not okay the radius it's going to be integral over the limit 0 to l d square v over dx square the whole square into dx so that is the expression for the total strain energy that is stored that is stored in the beam. Of course, 1 by r is not going to be a constant uh, with respect to the length. Because we know what is 1 by r, it's d square v over dx square, the whole square. And v is deflection. And v deflection is a function of the length. So definitely the d squared v by dx squared, the whole squared cannot be pulled outside the integral. Okay. 
Of course, one by R is a constant with respect to the cross-sectional area. Of course, the change is going to be very minuscule. The one by R is just a constant with respect to the cross-sectional area, right? Okay, because uh, the, uh, with respect to the cross-sectional area, this radius is not going to change. This is radius R, right? So, of course, that is not going to change. The radius of curvature of the beam is not going to change with respect to the cross-sectional area. So, this is the final expression for strain energy that is stored in a beam. Thank you so much.